Well, happy 2024, guys. I am recording this on my phone because if you've listened to the last couple episodes, they have been very skippy and blocky, and I don't know why I've tried everything, even gave a few weeks off, and I still am having issues, so I think I need a new adapter, So, but I really want to put this episode out, so you are getting this live from my phone. If you're hearing this, my mic is like not standing up because I guess it's mad at me. But anyway, we are going to start this episode off with an affirmation that I thought that we could take into the weekend with us. The affirmation is, I bring my positive vibe and a big smile wherever I go. I thought that was very fitting for us on this podcast. What is up, guys? Welcome back for another year and another Thursday of Raising Serotonin. I hope that you had the most peaceful and loving and graceful holiday season and an amazing New Year's Eve and a great New Year's Day. I hope everyone was surrounding you that you love the most or you got to see anyone that you love. That's really important, especially during the holidays. I want to give you all a quick shout out really quick for always giving me grace and space to process whatever I am going through. And I don't want to start this podcast off on a sad note or anything, but I do want to make you all aware that on December 27th, we had to make the decision to let Rocco go over the Rainbow Bridge We are really processing, my family and I are still processing and grieving from losing him. We really just had to do what was best for him and which was really just letting him go and letting him be at peace and not in pain anymore. He had two huge tumors in his stomach, so in in his abdomen area, so it was just not good to see and I did not want him to go through anymore I'm still not over it I don't know if I'll ever be honestly over it like do you ever get over that kind of stuff but like I said I had to do what was best for him even though it kills me on the inside and that's just what we do for people and animals that we love sometimes we need to prioritize their peace over our own sometimes and Anyway, I just want to say thank you for giving me a few weeks to process and grieve all of that. But no worries, we are back in action for 2024. Who is happy that it is a new year? Like, seriously, I am raising my hand so freaking high right now. I needed this reset. I love a good new year, honestly. And either way, if you're the type of person who says like, okay, whatever, it's just another day, another year, like, let's move on, let's keep going, move forward. I respect that 1,050%. Like, of course, that is one side of it. And then there's the other side of it who say, yay, new new year, new me. But that that's not what we're talking about here. I'm not saying that I'm the new year, new me person. I am the new year, let's continue to grow and shift and do things that make us feel good. I really like to use the 12 months in the year as more of a metric than anything. And everything that we have is data, right? Our whole lives are data. Everything that we go through is just information that is going to be into a memory. And it's happiness, peace, grace, sadness, all of the things. But it's something that is just going to be a memory at some point. So for, which is kind of sad to think about, but of course it's reality. For the last 12 months think about what did you do what did you not do obviously this is not like a reflection that you have to do but just think about it and what did you want to do and how can you use what you learned to continue to grow and to move forward a one percent better each day like that rule and that lifestyle rule lifestyle is not going to change whatsoever we still learn from what we previously were dealt and we move forward. We are faced with certain things in life and that is exactly how we grow and get better. We have to face some things, good, bad, sad, happiness, all of the emotions, but that's seriously how we learn to be the best person because I hate to use this example of Rocco, but like I never would have known anything like this until 
this would have happened with Rocco. Okay, like that's so sad to absolutely think about and I hate it and I I'm still, like I said, not over it, but I never would have known how I would have gone through it if I didn't have to go through it. So those are situations that we don't want to go through, but now I know how to process this a little better. If it ever were, it will, it will happen because I have two other dogs to, for it to happen in the future. And that's sad, but it's reality. And now that we're getting older and we have to realize this kind of stuff, let's just take every single moment that we possibly can and be grateful for it. After I spent some time reflecting on 2023 and not that I wrote down anything or did a real reflection, it was just more of a thought process one day after work. At the end of the year, I just kind of sat on my couch and thought about everything that happened in 2023. And of course, I probably forgot stuff because I'm human. So I really just focused on the most significant moments that had happened this past year, which then led me to the conclusion that my 2024 needs to be more intentional. Not that I wasn't intentional before, but I want to be more intentional. Do you feel that? Do you ever find yourself sometimes wondering, did you do like did something that you did actually help you or was it a waste of time or did it, did you really get anything out of it? Did it benefit you in any way, shape or form? Don't think that it's a bad thing if you didn't get something out of it or you didn't grow from something in every single way that you want to grow. It's OK because you learn something. You either take the experience with you or you don't. OK. Our brain can only hold so much information and it's going to prioritize the good things over the bad things unless you're triggered, which obviously we don't want to happen. So if we can remind ourselves of the mindset and the ways that we want to be, our brain is going to work with us. Yes, there is sometimes a battle with demons. I am one of those people that has some demons sometimes in my head and I have worked very very hard the last few years in therapy to come up with ways that really get the demons out and help me cope with whatever I'm dealing with in the best way I can and obviously not every time is perfect but it's better than not having a coping mechanism at all like sometimes I say the ABCs it like out loud and in my head I write out my thoughts Going for a walk sometimes can help and just really deep breathing, like extremely deep, deep breaths and taking just your good time on the walk. I was going to say like taking a long walk, but just take your time. It doesn't need to be a specific um, like mile length or anything like that. Talking it out, yelling at a pillow, coloring, turning on music, like watching your favorite TV show that makes you laugh, like belly laugh watch a movie like those are things that happen that I do when demons sometimes come into my head but promise me that you will keep trying to get those demons to go away it's an it's a very hard battle but it's not a battle that needs to be lost like you absolutely can get those demons out of your head and you can find something that makes you feel your best self all right so I came up with an ins and out list to be more intentional for 2024 If you came up with a list, send it my way on Facebook or Instagram, whatever you have me on. I love this stuff. I love looking at other people's. I love reading it. I love talking about it. It just makes, that's the kind of energy I want. I want this kind of energy in my life. My first in is low impact movement. You do not need endless hours of cardio. You do not need to be dripping sweat. You don't need to be lifting the heaviest weight possible or doing the craziest moves that you see online and to get results and feel good. There are so many ways to feel good. And if you are pushing yourself way too hard, you are going to wear your body out. That is not the point of fitness. That is not the point of working out. The point of all of that is to feel good. And maybe some people need the extraneous extraneous workouts, but we don't. I'm sure we don't. The people in this community are just here to feel a little bit better 1% each day. Those are special type of people that go to those extraneous workouts. Out, not listening to your body. This should be pretty obvious since you listen to this podcast. That's probably already something that you already do. But specifically this year, you have learned over the past few years really how to feel your body and 
when you don't feel good or when you have some low energy or anxiety and you're just feeling off, do what is best for you. Don't do what everyone else says that is, oh, X, Y, D, Z, do this. Like, you know what is best for you and your body. So if you want to move your body, go ahead and do that. If you need rest, go ahead and do that. Everything that we see on the internet is subjective. And moral of this is I need you to do what's best for you in reading at night. I don't want to hear that you don't like reading. This is coming from the girl that is dyslexic. And I started with self-help books. You can start with any type of book you could ever want. You can find a book that you're interested in. And I say this with so much love, okay? Because I used to hate reading. Hated it. But it was because I couldn't understand it. And if you're a movie person, find a movie that has a book and pick out the differences. Like, if that's what works for you or if that's what you need to do, do it. Reading in bed is so good for your mind to calm down. You need that calming down period, that wind down. If you don't want to have a complete nighttime routine, you need to have that period right before you fall asleep where you're like, okay, I'm getting relaxed and then you can fall asleep. Having the TV on or scrolling on your phone really affects the mind during sleep and I know that some people just need the the TV or need the phone I get it I hear you and I know we only live one time but if you're really really struggling with your sleep check out your sleep routine evaluate your sleep patterns and habits and I would suggest adding reading to your nightly nightly routine rather than TV a movie or being on your phone out social media and tv at night (laughs) obviously that goes hand in hand with reading but i just personally don't have time for this anymore when i looked back on how many books that i read this past year versus the last two years when i really started to love reading i was sad about it i read i read 11 books and that's amazing don't get me wrong but or 12 but i don't know the whole number it did make me upset because I did spend so much more time reading before and now I don't know I just wasn't finding amazing books that I loved before but now I really did find a good bunch of books that I'm reading again so you really got to go through the motions sometimes but I want to intentionally spend the time reading the books that I can learn from and reading books that make me feel good. In addition to this, I just spend so much time on social media as it is. I don't need to spend any more time on it, especially at night when I'm trying to have a peaceful sleep. You know? You know, you feel me? And and this is a continuation of this year, learning how to cook. Food is fuel. We don't need to just like heat up the microwavable things or the frozen meals and i know it takes time i know that's honestly my biggest thing i'm like i don't want to make it because it takes so much time to make and i gotta get out of that because i really do spend way too much money on food out somewhere when i can make it at home i can get the ingredients i know that will actually make me feel better rather than the cheap ingredients that restaurants use listen i love eating out don't get me wrong but they do use cheaper ingredients and not good quality ingredients a lot of the time okay not every single restaurant is like that of course the higher quality of the restaurant the better the ingredients the better the food but seriously i know fast food is just so convenient it's why it's called fast food and i get it too i well not fast fast food but like pizza and and hoagies and just eating out and the pastas and all that type of stuff i get it i love it too but we can fuel ourselves at home with better quality foods and ingredients and i know the big kicker is it doesn't cost as much and i know groceries are disgustingly expensive i swear kane and i don't spend under 200 dollars when we go to the grocery store it makes me sick to my stomach but in addition to that we're spending more money out on food because we are being lazy literally me i'm being lazy and don't want to cook something i know we don't always have everything that we want on hand when we're craving certain things because we're human okay whatever do it like once a month like it doesn't need to be every single week you're eating out it's a waste of your money i'm serious because then it just goes right through you 98 percent of the time and how do i know that because every time that (laughs) every time that we eat out something happens or Or one of my clients has told me, oh, I feel like shit, I ate this, blah, blah, blah. Like, you know, I just, okay, I've just picked up on it. All right, we got two more. My next one, my in, is not responding immediately to people. We need to prioritize and intentionally protect our peace more. 
we are in a culture where people expect us to do everything in the snap of like snap of your fingers that doesn't need to be our reality it actually annoys the shit out of me that that's how we were that's how i was brought up like oh you just send the email you send the text message and they answer and they get back to you they call and they answer right away like it doesn't need to be like that if that stresses you out and you don't want to be on your phone and you don't want to answer text messages during the day don't if you don't want to call people on the weekends don't if you don't want to be on your phone don't We do not need to respond to someone just because they send us a message. Yeah, you can say, hey, I'll get back to you when I can. Or, hey, I saw this. I'm not ignoring you. Like, there's all these messages that you can send back to your respectful. And those are messages that I send just as much as anyone anyone else. So, especially this year, protecting our peace, prioritizing ourselves and our happiness, and not immediately responding to people who probably wouldn't immediately respond to us out overworking in all areas of life that can cause burnout we have spent a lot of the past few years trying to navigate life with all of the weird changes and the shifts and the things that are happening in the world and we need to prioritize ourselves and i say it enough but i hope that it will stick Because you need to prioritize your happiness, your health, and the people that are around you. Because we live one life. And it is not about the endless work we can do for someone else or for our own business. I understand that we all have a livelihood. I do as well. That's a different story. But you don't need to be spending extra hours doing all the things. And if people are hanging a promotion or money over your head... I don't know. That doesn't seem too thrilling. Yeah, it's great. More money is great. We always want to have that in the bank account to be certain that we're okay because life is crazy. I understand. But that's a very risky thing to just be holding over someone when they can pull it away. And it's going to hurt you if that happens. And I don't want that for you. Take what you learn and work that into your lifestyle. Do what you have learned over the course of the past few years and figure out how it can be be beneficial to you. You don't need to be working 12 hours plus a day. You don't need to be doing that. Unless you're a nurse, I know those are the hours. But it doesn't need to be happening that way. Like Figure figure out what you want to do, what makes you feel good, and prioritize that time so it does not lead to burnout okay prioritize good and happy things schedule those things in your calendar and make those plans i've said it before prioritize your peace and your joy my last in is celebrating every single win all of them no matter what it is big or small you're celebrating it you read two pages that day i'm freaking happy for you you wrote your essay because that's what you needed to do for class hell freaking yeah you worked out today we are clapping for you you got the promotion oh, okay do you want to go out to dinner to celebrate like let's figure out how we feel good how we want to feel celebrated and celebrate the hell of ourselves because again one life that's it that's it we have to do the things that we want to do we have to figure out the ways to do them out self-hate and poor talk what we tell our brains it will believe and if you are telling yourself that you are not good enough that what you did was not good enough that is not celebrating a win you are celebrating every single win possible you did everything you could possible you could not give a fingernail more you did everything you possibly could so do not tell yourself differently and you will tell yourself that you are the most amazing thing on this earth that you are trying your best and that you are giving it your all i do have two other outs uh, which are excessive drinking and excessive scrolling i can spend so many hours on tiktok sometimes and that just needed that gotta cut that and i know i've said that for a while but i need to actually like prioritize that and that is why i'm prioritizing reading more and just spending more time off my phone because I will just scroll for hours because it's easy and it's mindless and I just don't feel that alcohol serves me in the best way possible but I do enjoy a drink here and there so I'm not going to say that I'm sober but I'm not going to be excessively drinking all the time because I did do that a few times this past year and I didn't love the way that it felt 
so those are just my outs for the like extra I don't really have anything to like go with them I just know that those are things that I need to prioritize this year these are all specific to me but if you relate to any of them or if you have other ones that I you think that I would relate to like dm me seriously guys let's chat about this stuff this is how we grow this is how we learn it makes me so excited I hope it makes you excited I am really just ready to see you grow and glow just as much as I'm ready to see myself grow and glow my 2024 glow up project is officially open for enrollment so if you are ready to glow up in your health and wellness through daily movement, cleaning up your nutrition, adding in some personal development, and a whole lot of accountability and support from your girl. This is your sign to click the show notes and click the link and just put your email in and you will get the rest of the details and on how you and I can help each other glow and grow this year. I am so excited. I am ready to take on the year and do big things together. I am totally looking forward to raising our serotonin together. Let's go, people. I will see you soon. Bye.